Yo, what's up guys? My name is Trey. Welcome to Game Over Entertainment. And today I will be giving you my predictions on guessing what the hell is going to happen in the next episode of The Wolf Among Us. Episode 5, Cry Wolf. And guys, um, I'm expecting big things from this episode, alright? And uh, I'm not expecting to see this episode until sometime probably towards the end of July, alright? Because uh, last episode we got in about a month and a half after the uh, episode 3. And I don't think that's going to happen again. I think Telltale's going to take more time with this one and, you know, hopefully give us a longer one than what we got in episode four, which was about an hour and 15 minutes, hopefully longer than that. So, yep, expecting big things. This is the final installation for season one. And, uh, you know, let's go ahead and get started. So first off, I'm going to say, you know, I got a little gripe, you know, stuff that grinds my gears and, uh, you know, these thumbnail images and these teasers bro they are so fake they're so fake to the point where i can't use them just to let you guys know what i'm talking about I talked about this in my walking dead uh prediction video but like if you see the thumbnail right here for episode four in sheep's clothing it has bluebird over here pointing at big b you know it looks like they're arguing um now that situation did not happen but telltale uh you know they, they gave hints out there they got bluebird in the teasers too like he is a significant character like he plays a big role in this game he doesn't play kind of he doesn't play any role he just comes in there for one scene and i don't even get a chance to talk to him also in the teaser images in the teaser for episode four we had the imagery with bloody mary you know her voiceover and it looks like big begin to awkward altercation where he's actually transforming at one point and getting into a fight bloody mary was damn near a no-show in episode four people mentioned her like she was a nightmare like the butcher <laughs> He's like, I don't want to know where the hell she lived. Even Jack said something about her. Uh, yeah, but we didn't get to see her like they made her seem like she's going to have a big part in this episode. So now at the end of every Wolf Among Us episode, besides episode four, Big B is throwing down and transforming. OK, and I'm expecting that in episode five too. the full beast mode. And when I'm like that, I'm not taking no prisoners either. So anyone who gets to my path. It's going down, all right. But before that, let me rewind a little bit. So Big B's caught up with the Crooked Man at the end of episode four. And you know, we get several options. I don't think which one you pick is gonna make a difference, uh, those ending options. I think there's gonna be a fight right off the bat. Big B's gonna be tossing hands with one of these people in this room right here. The only person that Big B cares about that can be used as leverage is Snow White. Now, if the criminals were smart, they would use that to control Big B and you know they would have the whole city unlocked like officially if the mayor's not there then who's going to take charge maybe Bluebeard might try to take over if they do do try to do something with Snow White to use that but yeah I'm predicting the fight right off the bat uh situations will come up um I gotta run through hoops again probably for the crooked man he has something over me okay because I'm not just gonna walk out of here now when I got the crooked man right in front of my face you know, you can't just walk into the crooked man's house any day of the week. Yeah, he's, he definitely got something hanging over my head because the guy's a little bit too confident, a little bit too collected right now in the face of me. And I am a dangerous person. Yes, Big B is, is very dangerous. Besides the fact that they do outnumber me five to one. One person that we did not see in that room that I was expecting to see was Bloody Mary, all right? Bloody Mary did not make a, a physical appearance, I guess, in episode four. We did see her imagery in the uh, the mirror scene, talking to Crane, you know, waving him goodbye and stuff like that. So I guess she was still there handling business. But me and Mary, we're gonna have that battle, man. We better have it. I predict we're gonna have that battle in episode five and it won't be concluded until like, maybe like the final 20 minutes of the episode, okay? We're gonna be getting that battle. And we're definitely gonna find out who the killer is. One person I was surprised to see in that in the crooked man's lair is was Vivian. The butcher did mention that he's not a part of the crooked man's inner circle. I have to believe that Vivian's involved in this involvement in this whole thing is pretty significant to let her in there and you know discussing business in front of her. Of course, she has a ribbon about around her neck that prevents her from saying anything. But I would not expect to see Narissa in there, on the other hand, you know. So I don't expect to see Vivian in there. So that's surprising. I think she is caught up in this and maybe some more 
Maybe she's more involved than I thought. The question is though, is she doing this against her will or is she fully aware of her actions and she's doing this on purpose? She doesn't seem to be in any kind of distress. I've seen Faith, I've seen Narissa, they both look worried, they both look like something's not right going on and they feel like wrong about it. Her on the other hand, she's always calm and collected. She seems to have everything under control. So maybe, yeah, something's going on. You know, from episode four, we do learn some things about the ribbon and how it works. Basically, that's the device that's keeping everybody from talking about stuff and taking it off will probably mean off with your head at the same time. So we're gonna keep that ribbon on for now. Ah, this spell, the, the lips, my lips are sealed spell. I'm so sick of that spell. It's been going on since episode one. I'm about to unseal some lips. All right, that has to happen in episode five. We're going to rip the tape right off the lips. I don't care if it burns, all right? We're going to find some answers. We're going to get this killer. And my guess is we're going to find a way to basically undo the spell safely, not killing somebody. And Narissa is going to spill the beans about everything and trade for her safety in the matter. I think that she's willing to talk to me. She tries her best to, even though she's under enchantment. And yeah, we're gonna break that and then we're gonna learn everything. And then we're gonna get the tense Wolf Among Us music. We're gonna get that call to action, you know, take down these criminals. It's gonna be really nice, man. Can't wait for that to happen. And I still, even though all the stuff I played, all the gameplay, I still have no clue in my mind who the killer is, okay? And what could their motive be? Yeah, but is uh they have a witch on their side. I wonder if it's Auntie Greenleaf who's actually has the enchantment on these ribbons and actually did the storm and everything else, but we're also going to be getting a, a character death, man. Someone is going to pass away, and I'm not talking about the bad guys either. Someone that is a good person is going to die. I can see it happening. Yes, I'm expecting very big things for episode five because I just <laughs> said a lot of bombs up in here, but yeah, I'm expecting very big things for it. Uh, the episode's called Cry Wolf. Now, what could that title possibly mean? Well, I do think uh, Big B is going to be transformed into the full-blown wolf mode. Um, and that's, um, yeah, I think someone's going to need my help. And I'm going to have a, a choice. I'm going to have a big choice. A choice that will affect the lives of one of our Fable Town residents. For sure. You know what? That's all I got to say for episode five, The Wolf Among Us, man. Uh, I expect it to be a big old adrenaline rush. Uh, hopefully we get some... I actually looking forward to a quick time fight event with, with Bloody Mary. That's going to be very intense. I'm going to come ready. Uh, we're not going to play around with her. All right. She's, she's too dangerous. All right. She's too dangerous. And yeah, I can't wait. Uh, and I want to leave you guys with some last minute questions. I don't know how they would fit in my prediction. So I'm just going to say them out there. Now, uh, Dr. Swinehart. Stick around, all right? I don't know if I trust this guy. Oh, please, I could do this with my optic nerve severed. He was supposed to investigate this next severing. We were supposed to hear some information back on that. We never did. I wonder if that's just uh, something Telltale forgot to, you know, implement in the story, like they forgot to write it in, or was that done on purpose? Swinehart was supposed to investigate their cause of death and figure out how this is happening, and we were supposed to hear something back from him, but we never did, so that's interesting. Could the fact that Colin's Huff and Puff addiction, because he does like Huff and Puff just like me, and we did find Huff and Puff cigarettes also on the crime scene where Lily was uh, supposedly murdered at, could that have any significance? I'm here to take care of my friend. With what? Your hooves? Hey, listen, Please, lady. keep it down back there. But uh, if he's able to orchestrate anything like that, maybe he can actually get himself a glamour. And he's just pretending that he cannot get a glamour at his means. He's still in the city. I wonder what he does when he's not at the farm. That's also a pending question. Great. Also, another thing, uh, Detective Brannigan. She's been hinted around here, around in the thumbnail. She's been hinted in uh, episode three when we look into the file folder. And still no word of seeing her in the episodes. What the hell is that about? You think she can make a final appearance in this one? Maybe she can play a role? I hope so. Uh, I like to see a regular human involved in this crazy ass story, but highly unlikely though. That's very helpful. Thank you. 
Uh, also, the decision for Toad to actually send him to the farm or, you know, give him other ch another chance, that's definitely going to be making a uh, appearance this episode. I don't think Telltale just had us make that random choice out of nowhere. So, yeah, Toad's going to be in it in some form or fashion. Expect to see him and uh, his attitudes probably will change on what you chose in episode four. Yeah. Where's the kid's glamour? Fuck you. And does choice really matter? in the wolf among us i have one character that is alive right now that could possibly be dead in other people's playthroughs i'm talking about prince lawrence yeah you remember him from episode one now we did see a quick cameo from him and it was real brief in episode three but since then we haven't heard anything else from him i think choices like that need to manifest in the playthroughs big time wolf among us episode five cry wolf is in the building let's go man Look out for it on the end of July. Mark my words. Peace out, guys. Don't forget to give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video, people. It really does help me out. Uh, share it on uh, Twitter, Facebook, all that good stuff. And uh, subscribe for more uh, Wolf Among Us content, all right? I'm out of here. Have a good one. That went about as well as I expected. <sighs> we need to solve this before something else happens. Who knows what? Bloody Mary here, a straight up psychopath who murders children. Hmm. But then what do prostitutes have to do with it? Lily and Faith? This is about those girls, and it'll always be about those girls. Nothing will change that.